Christ is worthy, is worthy to be praised. He has a name that's above every other name. In the name of Jesus, all names of God, bless His holy name. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Abraham, we worship you. God of Isaac, we bow before you. God of Jacob, may your name forever be glorified. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, Father, arise. Fight for your children. Give them total and complete deliverance. And give us dominion tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Almighty God. And you may please be seated. God bless you. And thank you, choir. Thank you for a wonderful performance tonight. Thank you very much. As at 5 p.m. this evening, a number of babies born during this convention had increased to 65. Today we have among them a set of twins. one boy and one girl and as of now we have boys 33 
and girls 32. Let the boys shout praise the Lord. And let the girls shout hallelujah. The girls are closing the gap fast. Okay. Now, sanitation. I told you to keep your surroundings clean because I'll be announcing every evening those who are clean and those who are dirty. Let's start with those who are dirty. Number three from the bottom is Anambra Province 3. Number two from the bottom is Ogun Province 2 and 9. At the very, very bottom is Lagos Province 61. <laughs> Lagos. Among the cleanest, number three, among the cleanest, the top is Oshun Province 1. Number two, among the clean, as the second best, is Adamawa province. And the cleanest of all, as of now, is Oyo province eight. Glory be to God. Keep your surroundings clean. Now, tonight we have some serious actions to take. Where is that noise coming from? Okay. Thank you. And so I will just lay a little foundation. And then we go to, to business. You mean you are not hearing anymore? If you are not hearing me clearly, clap. Those who are hearing me clearly, shout hallelujah. Those who are not hearing me, hearing me clearly, shout hallelujah. So it's about half and half. Philippians chapter 2. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2. Okay. Abi? It's not okay. 
Philippians chapter 2. All right. Verse 5 to 11. Before I finish reading, the hand of the Almighty God will be on the engineers. Otherwise, I will invite them to come and join me here. So we can pray for them. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not a robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father everything that is not of God in your life we bow to the name of Jesus tonight I said we will be doing some things tonight and to encourage you let me share one or two truths with you truth number one there are only two types of people how many types The dominant and the dominated. It's either you have dominion or you are subdued. There is no middle way. So you have to make up your mind straight away tonight. Do you want to have dominion? Or do you want to live your, the rest of your life in subjection? Which one do you want? <laughs> Number two. My English teacher taught me. So if what I'm saying is wrong, it is the fault of my English teacher. He taught me that Verbs, words, are in two major categories, active and passive. Active means you do something, e.g. word like fight. It's an active verb. It calls for action. Grab is an active word. Run is an active word. 
And then there is the passive world that you don't really do anything. For example, sleep. You don't do anything. Just lie on the bed and you're gone. Fed. Different from eat. Fed simply means you open your mouth, they put the food in, and it's gone. Eat. That's a different matter. You have to grab the food, bring it to your mouth. So two categories of words. Active and passive. Now the word dominion is the noun of the word dominate. And dominate is a very active word because it means in essence force down and keep down by force to dominate means you force down and you keep down by force. And I give you an example. Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. Judges 6, 1 to 5. The Midianites had dominion over the children of Israel at a particular time. So they will wait. They will let the children of Israel plant. Wait till what they have planted has grown. Then they will come with their cattle and their camels and eat up everything leaving nothing behind. And that's called dominion. Have you ever heard of anything like that at all? Anything like that at all? A convention with the theme of dominion, therefore, is not a convention of passivity. It's not a convention you come just to learn and do nothing. It's a convention of action. May I decree in the name that's above every other name that everything that has been holding you down will be destroyed tonight. Now let me move on. Because tonight we want to talk about name above all names. Let me just remind us of the power that is in a name. Names are very, very important. Probably you have not noticed 
that when you meet somebody new, the first thing they ask you for is, what is your name? They don't ask you, first and foremost, how old are you? They don't ask you how tall you are. They don't ask you how rich are you. What is the first thing they ask for? What's your name? It should interest you that if they ask for any other thing after that, the next thing will be, where do you come from? You may not think about that at all, <laughs> but it has importance. Where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. Years ago, when Nigeria just won the World Cup in football, and I went to Israel for the first time, they asked me, where do you come from? And I said, Nigeria, they said, ah, football. Where do you come from? Name. And you say, I'm from America. It says something. Where is your address? The name of where you live. It means something. <laughs> Where is your address? I'm from Mushi. I used to live there, so I, that's why. That's why I moved from Mushi to the camp. When you say I'm from Mushi, it tells the fellow who has never met you before something slightly different from if you say I am from VI names Moses for example his name means pulled out of the water for the rest of his life. Water, water, water. Played a major role in his life. Changed water to blood. Opened the Red Sea. Made bitter water sweet brought water out of the rock and the reason he didn't get to the promised land was because of water. Elijah you may not know the meaning of his name But on Mount Carmel, when he called fire down from heaven and the people fell on their faces and they were saying, the Lord is God, the Lord is God, they are actually calling the name of Elijah, the Lord is God.
names. So important that for until God came on the scene in Genesis 17 and said to him, I change your name from Abram to Abraham. I change the name of your wife from Sarai to Sarah. I pray today that if your name is the one standing against your destiny, you get a change of name tonight. I'm telling you all this so that you can get the importance of the name of Jesus. A name that is above all other names, above all names in heaven, all names on earth, under the, all names under the earth. It is the name of dominion. At his name, every knee must do what? Back. <laughs> Embedded in the name of Jesus are many military names. Names that talks about fighting. Warfare. I won't be able to tell you all, but you know it has many names. But take the name Way. John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. He said, I am the way. Do you see force involved in that name? Very simple. Each time you make a road, how much force do you apply? You look in the direction of a jungle and you want to make a way here. How many trees have to go? Maybe God will help me explain. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, God said, when you get into trouble, he will make a way of escape. What does escape tell you? Is somebody already captured, already kept in bondage, but suddenly is free. The one whose name is the way. We create the light. 
John 9 verse 5. John chapter 10 verse 5. Jesus Christ said, As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he was introduced in John chapter 1, From verse 4 to 5, etc., etc. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. The next thing we hear is the light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot overcome it. When you talk about overcoming, there is a struggle. When light shines, it so under the unction of the Holy Spirit, I want to command into. The Take another one of his name embedded in the name Jesus. John 11, verse 25 to 26. John 11, 25 to 26. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, Me, I dominate death. That's what he said. And so I'm decreeing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every part of your body that is called dead now will receive life today. His name. He's giving him a name that's above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is what? Lord. Lord of what? Psalm 24 from verse 7 to 10, Psalm 24 from verse 7 to 10 tells us is the Lord of hosts. I've told you before, I thought when he says he's the Lord of hosts, I thought he's talking about the hosts of heaven alone. But no, 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 no. He is the Lord of hosts in heaven. The Lord of hosts on earth. The Lord of hosts underneath the earth. He controls them all. And I've seen him in action. <laughs> I've seen him controlling demons. On my behalf. 
I've told you stories before, several of them. I may just remind you of one of them. <laughs> and then we were in Cameroon. We were going for a program. And there were escorts trying to clear the way for me through the traffic. But the people just ignored them. And suddenly a madman, so mad, saliva was dripping from his mouth. You could see demons dancing in his eyes. Came out of nowhere. came in front of my car and went to the car in front, slapped the bonnet and made a gesture to the right. The driver looked at him and moved. He went to the next car, slapped the bonnet, made a gesture to the left. The driver looked at him and moved. Within minutes, he cleared the way for me. And when I have passed the traffic, he came to the side where I was sitting and bowed. And disappeared into the crowd. My children who were with me in the car were in a shop. And I told them, I said, I told you, my father is the Lord of hosts. Every host that he has to mobilize to give you dominion, he will do so tonight in Jesus' name. And Exodus 15, verse 3. Exodus 15, verse 3 says, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. So many, many of us Christians have come to think that Jesus Christ is just the hem helpless lamb. <laughs> he was a lamb for just a season. And he was a lamb for a purpose. When the soldiers came to arrest him, and Peter grabbed a sword and cut off the hair of one of the servants. Jesus said to him, ah, if I want to fight, I can ask my father to send me a handful of legions <laughs> of angels. And according to Bible record, one angel can kill a hundred and eighty-five thousand soldiers in one night. So how many angels are required to deal with all your enemies? One. But you see, <laughs> most of the time I'm telling you now, you already know, so you say thank you for, a, for refreshing our memory. The problem with us Christians I told my pastors in the minister's conference, we have 
what is called dominion by association. Jesus Christ is my elder brother. I am his younger brother. We belong to the same family. We are both children of the Most High. He's a child begotten. I am a child by adoption. But both of us are children of the same father. Now I want you to look at it this way. <laughs> you want to travel from Lagos to the camp. And there's a serious tra traffic problem on the way. Particularly because the road have been partially closed because the president is coming to the camp. So you say, oh, will I ever get to the camp before they finish? And then as you were there, somebody saw you in the entourage of the president and said to the president, that's your younger brother. And he looked at you and said, join the convoy. When will you arrive at the camp? When the president Jesus can do because you are associated with him and you have his permission to use his name you can do also when David was going to fight Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, from the beginning to the end, just read the whole chapter. He made a statement in verse 45. He said, Goliath, you have your own weapons. You are big, you are strong. But I have a secret weapon. And that secret weapon is a name. I come against you in the name of the Lord. At the end of the confrontation, who won the battle? I can't hear you. chapter 16 verse 17 to 18 Mark 16 17 to 18 Jesus Christ said these signs shall follow them that believe in my name what would they be doing with the name The first thing he says you will do with the name is you will cast out demons. What's the meaning of cast out? It means you grab by force and throw out. Those of you who used to go to nightclubs, I say used to because I know you don't go anymore. 
there are some people they call bouncers. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, don't show your hand. You don't want them to know you. you. Huge, hefty, strong men. Whenever there is somebody, maybe is drunk and is misbehaving, they turn to the bouncer and say, Cast this one out. And the bouncer comes. <laughs> He says, sir, will you go out? He said, no, nah, I'm not going. <laughs> I am going to stay here till when I like. The bouncer picks him up and does what? And throw him out. Tonight, everything in your life that you don't want, you are going to cast it out. Then, then, then there is this interesting statement in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 to 20. Matthew 18 from verse 18 to 20. It says, Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Bible scholars, those who really know the Bible very well, unlike a small boy like me, they say what that passage is saying is whatever you allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth shall be forbidden in heaven. You know the, the implication of that? If you allow sickness to stay with you, it will be allowed failure you forbid demons they shall be forbidden in heaven I'm going to tell you just two little stories and then we'll go to action Some of you have heard the story before. As this son of mine was living in Ikeja. In the same house, same block of lots, as a witch doctor. And the witch doctor was giving him all my manners of horrors. He came out removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it will obey you. Move this mountain. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm a child of God. I'm supposed to be as gentle as a dog. I said, very good. <laughs> then I suddenly I discovered I didn't see my son for quite a while. When finally I saw him, 
there were rashes all over his body. What happened? The witch doctor reported to the police that some people were holding meetings in his flat. People came to pray. The witch doctor said they were holding meetings. The policemen who were coming to the witch doctor for charms moved in, arrested my son, put him in detention, and mosquitoes dealt with him. After some time, those people discovered this man is a man of God. Is, you know, when he, when he got into prison, he began to do like Paul and Silas, singing and praising God. Finally, they released him. He came back to me and told me the story. I said, oh, welcome, thou Lamb of God, gentle as a dove. He went back that day and commanded mountain to move. The mountain moved the following day. In the name that's above every other name, every mountain in your life, we move tonight. I told my pastors a story only last week, a reminder of something that happened when we wanted to start the church in a particular place, not far from here. That place was in total darkness. They didn't want anything called Jesus. And so when the crusade started, they brought out masquerades. The masquerades were weeping the women and children who gathered. And the drums was beating so loud, they wouldn't even be able to hear the crusader. But one of my little girls, who is from that area, knew the tradition that if a basculate should come out and while the drummers were drumming, if the drum should break, that masquerade will not see the following year. So she went aside and said, in the name of Jesus, I command every drum to break. And bam, bam, bam. The drum just began to break. A masquerade scattered. Every drum of shame beating against you must break tonight. So a convention on dominion it's not really a convention on theory. It's a convention on practica. And there are three areas where I want you to do warfare for yourself. And then there's one area I'm going to ask you to join me in doing warfare. It won't take long. It's just that we are going to pray some violent prayers. Area number one, where you are going to pray for yourself. And let me appeal to you. The elders have a proverb. When you hear, carry it, carry it.
intervention on practica. And there are three areas where I want you to do warfare for yourself. And then there's one area I'm going to ask you to join me in doing warfare. It won't take long. It's just that we are going to pray some violent prayers. Area number one, where you are going to pray for yourself. And let me appeal to you. The elders have a proverb. When you hear, carry it, carry it, touch with Goliath. Goliath stands for somebody who says you will never have dominion. The devil knew that David had been anointed to be king over Israel. The devil knew that. Goliath said, Send me one man. Let us fight. If he wins, our kingdom will become his kingdom. If he loses, your kingdom will become our kingdom. The devil was targeting David. He knew he was to be king. He knew there are forces. And you know some of them who will not want you to ever have dominion. We have to deal with them tonight. That's number one. Number two. In Second Kings chapter two, verse twenty-three to twenty-four. Second Kings two, verse twenty-three to twenty-four. Elisha had just obtained dominion. <laughs> he attended a convention. On the other side of River Jordan. Some 50 sons of the prophets, they were there watching the convention. They weren't participating. Elijah was the one who was preaching. Elijah was the only one attending the convention. By the end, it's my prayer that during this convention, the Spirit of God that is operating in my life will come on a double portion upon somebody. And he, he had just demonstrated, ah, I have dominion. He crossed River Jordan, he got to Jericho, canceled the course upon the city. And suddenly, some people came and began to mock him. You bald headed fellow. Which dominion have you? You're deceiving yourself. He turned around and used a name. I simply said, Lord, silence my mockers. Incidentally, that is the theme for next month Holy Ghost service. As soon as he spoke, because now he has dominion by association with the God of Elijah, 
Elisha followed. Everything that thus far have been mocking you, everything that thus far have been asking where is your God, we must deal with it tonight. That's number two. Number three, you will find in Acts chapter 13, verse 6 to 12. Acts 13, verse 6 to 12. Paul was preaching to a governor. The governor was interested. But there was a sorcerer who was interjecting, saying, I don't mind him, all he's interested in is in your money. Uh, do they? <laughs> and Paul said, Because you have decided to turn yourself to a mountain on my way to achieving my goal, you will be blind for a season. I still don't know why he had that for a season. When you leave this convention and all of a sudden with the boldness, with the unction of the Holy Spirit upon you, you begin to move speedily upward, anyone who tries to stand in your way must be destroyed. So there are three prayers we are going to pray tonight for yourself. And then I will tell you the one I want you to join me together to pray. But before we pray, let me give an opportunity to those of you who have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. Because if you are not a friend, if you are not a child of God, he said it clearly in his word. If you are not for me, you are against me. There's no neutral ground. So when we begin to pray dangerous prayers tonight, if you are not already on the side of God, fire will fall and it may consume you. So if you are here and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, but you want to do so now, because I know you are very far off, some of you, I'm going to count from 1 to 15. But if you are very far off, you better begin to move now even as I begin to count. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you want to become a member of the family of the Most High God, begin to come now as I count. One. Two. If you are not for God, you are against God. There's no middle way. It's either you are a child of God or you are a child of the devil. There's no middle way. If you are not born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you are facing trouble. But if you come to Jesus now, he will save your soul and forgive all your sins and welcome you into the family of God. Three.
fall. Seven. If you want to clap, clap like warriors. Eight. Ten. Eleven. Thirteen. Fourteen. Thank you. Now. Those of you who are still on the way, just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And as you are coming, pray along with those who are already in the front. Those of you who are already in the front, cry to Jesus Christ, tell him, I've come to surrender my life to you completely. Please save my soul, forgive all my sins, receive me to the family of God, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. And please, the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them for a minute or two, asking that the Almighty God will have mercy on them, that he will forgive all their sins and wash them clean with his blood. Let's pray that God will give them a brand new beginning today, that they will become true children of the living God. Let's intercede for them. And those of you on the way, you have to hurry up now because I will soon be praying for salvation. Hurry up. Thank you, Father. Keep coming and praying as you come. Ask God to have mercy on you and save your soul and forgive all your sins.
and receive you into the family of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. I wait ten seconds more. Just make sure you get there before I finish praying. Because I have to pray now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I just want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for these wonderful people that have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Father, please, as they have come, receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. Save their souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive them into the family of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, don't let them ever go back to the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. Every time they call on you from now on, Father, answer them by fire. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, if you are still coming, keep coming. The prayer has reached you on the way. Now, those of you already in front, I rejoice with you. From now on, I promise you I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will help me. They will give you a card, which you are to fill very quickly. And then I can assure you I'll be praying for you. And if you are still on the way, keep coming because I see some of you stay on the way so they will give you a card you fill it very quickly before you go back to your seat now the rest of us are we ready for warfare <laughs> your answer doesn't sound your feet you're going to lift your voice to the almighty god loud and clear and say father Every Goliath in my way. Let them die tonight. And you better open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Every Goliath wanting to take away my domain. No matter how big they are. Let them die tonight. Let them die tonight, not tomorrow. Let them die tonight. Every Goliath, in whatever form, by whatever name, whether a human being or an institution, let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Every Goliath wanting to take away my domain, wanting to wait, wanting to take away my kingdom, wanting to take away my dominion. Let them die tonight.
every Goliath, whatever may be their name. Whatever may be their nature, let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Every Goliath. Blocking my dominion. And I'm die tonight. Let them die tonight. Them die tonight. Every Goliath, whatever may be their nature, whatever may be their name, wherever they may be located, let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Shendra Mahakatanda, a KK Romo Koshiki Rambo Kotunda Ramakashiki Ramo Kotunda. Every Goliath must die tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Every Goliath must die tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And you're going to lift your voice to the Almighty God. And say, Father, everything in my life that is this saying, where is my God? In the name of Jesus, let it vanish tonight. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. Everything that is still mocking me, mocking my God, See, saying, where is your God? This is your God that you say is so powerful. This is your God that you say can do all things. Where is he now? Everything that is still mocking my God. Must disappear tonight. Must disappear tonight. Must disappear tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every mocker of my God must be destroyed tonight. Whatever it may be, every mocker of my God, every mocker of my God everything in my family that people can point to and say uh -uh, but you say you are serving a God that can do all things why this every mocker of God in my life must be destroyed tonight thank you Father Thank you, Father. In 
Jesus mighty name we have prayed then the third prayer are all those things that we want to stand between you and your goal every sorcerer every witch every hindering force whoever they may be you lift your voice to the almighty God and say father every force that will hinder my progress let them be destroyed tonight go ahead talk to the almighty God whether they are witches or wizards or herbalists even if there are bosses in my place of work that will not allow me to reach my goal Blindfold them, eject them, move them out of the way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, move them out of the way. Move them out of the way. Move them out of the way. Of the way. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And now the prayer I want you to join me in praying, which I want you to pray with all your strength. Is this enemy called cancer? It is waging war against many children of God. I want you to agree with me tonight that from now on there will no longer be cancer in the family of God so I want you to join hands with somebody let's pray this prayer in agreement and say Father in the body of Christ no more cancer your mouth and cry to the almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the body of Christ. No more cancer. cancer Lord we come against cancer no more cancer in the body of Christ if it has crept in in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we command it to get out no more cancer in the body of Christ, no more cancer. No God Almighty, no more cancer. We're all in agreement, Lord. And you say, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We bind cancer. We forbid cancer. We forbid cancer in the body of Christ. No more cancer. We're all in one accord. No more cancer. Remoko shente remaka randeke remoko tunda. Wherever it is that is coming, we command it to get out. 
God forbid cancer in the body of Christ. No more cancer in the body of Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The last prayer will be your own. One young man gave a testimony yesterday. He said three armed robbers broke into his apartment. They had weapons. They had nothing. He just kept on shouting, Jesus, 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 and they ran away. Whatever it is that is still left that you want to get rid of now, talk to the Almighty God. I just mention the name of Jesus. Tell that thing. In the name of Jesus, I command you, this problem, you must get out. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command every demon, every evil force, in any way whatsoever, tormenting the church of God. Get out. In the mighty name of Jesus. In that name that's above every other name. Every force of darkness. Move. Because Jesus said, let there be light. And there was light and the light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome it. So tonight, light, you must shine. Defeat every form of darkness in the life of your children. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Sakura monku shindere mankatanda. Enke ke ke romo ko ronde ke re ma ka shike ni re mo ko ronde re mo ko sheta ma mo ko ronde ke re ma ka shike te re mo ko ronde re mo ko sheta. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. name we have prayed now lift up your hands I want to pray with you my father and my God I want to thank you for that name that's above every other name thank you for the powerful name of Jesus tonight on behalf of every one of us, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I join my faith with the faith of these, your children, and I hereby decree every Goliath in the lives of these, your children, must die tonight. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that everything left in the homes, in the lives, in the offices of these your children that is still mocking, that is still saying where is their God must die tonight. I 
I decree that any person or group of persons, any force, any association that will stand between this your children and achieving their destiny must die tonight. And in total agreement with this, your children, I hereby decree in the entire body of Christ, no more cancer. No more cancer. In the mighty name of Jesus, no more cancer. And all the prayers of your children, my Father and my God, before the sun rises tomorrow, turn to a testimony. Go with them as they go. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I, I, I want you to do something with me. I just want you to shout the name of Jesus seven times. Three, go. Jesus. Two. Jesus. Three. Jesus. Four. Jesus. Five. Jesus. Six. Jesus! God bless you.